The Unshackled Waves, episode 202. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. The results for the US midterm elections are now in and sees the Democrats winning control of the House of Representatives, or Republicans remaining in control and increasing their majority in the Senate. Democrats also made gains in the state uh, gubernatorial elections. Now, what's it like to be completely banned from Facebook? We'll find out by catching up with uh, Dusty Bogan, who was one of the Proud Boy elders to find themselves banned last week as the Proud Boys were removed completely from the platform. Also, is racial stereotyping wrong? I thought it'd be good to ask Unshackled contributor and a trans woman of Asian descent, uh, Libby Down Under. It's a busy show, so for the complete rundown on the midterm results, I welcome back to the show Deputy Editor of The Unshackled and US citizen, Emilio Garcia. Emilio, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. Uh, now, despite the fact that you're now based in Australia, we still rely on you as a U.S. citizen to be our resident uh, U.S. Uh, politics uh, expert. But, uh, of course, uh, worldwide, the, the U.S. Uh, midterm elections has been the, the, the biggest uh, development. But why don't we start uh, by going through the, the campaign? And there was a number of what's termed October surprises. Uh, well, uh, they should really be called uh, October uh, tragedies because there, there was <laughs> quite a number of uh, uh, violent uh, incidents which seemed to really mm. heighten the, the, the political uh, discourse. Uh, well, I mean, the, the heightening of political discourse, I think, has been happening now for some time. Uh, right now, it just happens to have been uh, a few really unsavory, uh, very dramatic issues, both of which, of course, were initially thought, well, not thought to be within the common consensus, just a couple of loons on uh, Facebook saying that it was some kind of conspiracy theory. But uh, we obviously had the, the bombing attacks and we had the attack on the synagogue, of which both sides immediately decided to take the baton and attack the other side for the incivility. And there was also the migrant cal uh, caravan and the, the right. Tallahassee uh, yoga shooting in Florida, which actually mm. didn't get much attention. But uh, the, the perpetrator there who shot himself, he was an uh, alt-right uh, white nationalist, what's termed an incel, involuntary, celibate, <laughs> angry at uh, women because he was, he was single. Yeah, because you can't get laid. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, uh, listen, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, what, what was trying to be done here is taking the random actions of a couple of people and trying to accredit it to a certain party or a certain type of rhetoric. Now, the issue is that to try to do that is just ignoring the facts. We know that Generally, when one person does something like this, like a mass shooting or a mass act of violence, the media handles it in such a way that it gives this person a certain, a certain level of notoriety that then other people who also have uh, issues and are looking for a similar level of notoriety will then go and try to obtain. So to say that this is somehow uh, intertwined into the rhetoric of Donald Trump or the Democrats, you can say that it has some kind of correlation to the heightened uh, incendiary rhetoric. But I don't think that you can credit it to anyone. And also another spectacle that, that happened over the last uh, few months was the, the Brett Kavanaugh uh, confirmation ah. to the Supreme Court and this mm. uh, litany of women who came forward to claim that uh, he had assaulted, raped them at parties mm. uh, 30 years ago. And even if they weren't true, it, w it was told that his mm. confirmation would trigger unrelated sexual assault survivors and we just had in the last week one of the the right. kavanaugh accusers she recanted saying she was angry about his uh, confirmation and so just decided to make it all up no it's unbelievable this was really one of the most unethical badly put together hit jobs that i've ever seen and i think and you know this actually really reduced the momentum that democrats had and we'll get into this later but 
they were set to take more seats than they did. And after the Kavanaugh incident, we kind of saw their, their numbers reduce. Now, obviously, we knew on the face of it, anyone that wasn't uh, functioning along party lines and trying to claim that somehow someone bringing up baseless, evidenceless accusations was somehow credible would know that this is just not this was, was not credible, that this was not something to be believed, and that it was certainly not something that was that carried enough weight to ruin someone's life and a great narrative was on behalf of the left was christine blasey ford came out and she had nothing to gain this is why we believe her she had nothing to gain except over a million dollars in a book deal which is what she has gained already not to mention the widespread love of every single person that is in the Democrats' camp now. I mean, this woman is now a hero. She made over a million dollars from the from the, the fundraising campaigns that were put together online for her. Uh, it, supposedly, this was to build her defense, but the Democrats paid for everything, so that just went right into her bank account. Never said anything about what she what she did with it. And finally, once she decided that she wasn't going to pursue these allegations <laughs> against Brett Kavanaugh anymore, it turns out that she's looking for a book deal. And book deals tend to have advances uh, on the low end in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So to say that she had nothing to gain was ridiculous. And the other two women are now under uh, criminal probes because their accusations were so clearly false that now they, they, might, they might be facing criminal penalties for, for lying for political purposes. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that it all became uh, undone, only conveniently after uh, he had mm. been uh, confirmed. Now, let's look at the actual uh, results. Uh, now, mm. the all, all of the, the pundits and uh, poll crunches, they'd been predicting a, a Democrats would win the, the House of Representatives, uh, right. while Republicans would uh, retain control of the the Senate now. Everyone was saying, "Oh, well, the polls were were wrong in in 2016 uh, right. uh, with uh, Trump," but they actually weren't because uh, yeah, the, exactly. the the popular vote was was pretty much as the the polls uh, predicted. But Trump won the uh, electoral college. But uh, it played out as uh, predicted. Re Republicans actually had gains in the Senate, while the Democrats uh, are projected to to win control of the House of Representatives. Yeah, that's right. Essentially, right now we saw uh, we saw kind of both sides trying to to inflate the numbers. Uh, I saw what's this guy's name? He's on the Young Turks. No one likes him. Um, Sen Sink. I, don't, I can't pronounce it. Sink Yuga. Yes, that guy. I'm never going to learn how to pronounce that name. But he was saying that they were going to pick up 58 seats. Probably not. But they did pick up up 26. Um, and then I, we had uh, Michael Knowles. Uh, he was on the Daily Wire. And he said that, in fact, they would, uh, they would retain the House, which also seemed just to not be, uh, not be realistic. So what we know, what we knew to be true was generally that Democrats would take the House and Republicans would keep the Senate. Now, I didn't really like uh, the, the rhetoric on both sides of either blue wave or red wave, because what we saw here is clearly not a red wave. Obviously, the, the, the Republicans were going to lose um, a little momentum. That's what happens on, on, on off-year elections. The assumption that somehow there was going to be a, a blue wave, a massive hysterical blue wave in which they were going to take control of the House and the Senate, I don't know where they got that from. I don't know where, where uh, what information they had that was informing that, uh, that, that type of rhetoric. Yeah, I remember what was that uh, I saw on the news today, Jake Tapper, who was disappointed that this was not the blue wave uh, they had been hoping right. for. It was a blue trickle. It was a tiny blue trickle, essentially. I mean, they picked up 26 seats in the House. That's decent. And now they have control of the House. That's what they wanted. Now, it's better that they only have the House, especially considering the way in which the Democrats have been acting recently. Uh, it would be nice if, uh, you know, if, if you had, you know, traditional times when uh, Congress people were objective legislators who would, you know, try to try to use their best logic and, and look at initiatives uh, in the most objective way possible and, and vote if, if it was going to benefit their constituency, then, you know, having a, a Democratic House of Representatives and a Republican president in Congress wouldn't be that bad. It would act as something of, of a, a counterweight a check 
then that'd be good. But what we know, and well, I, I shouldn't say no, but I, I, I put money to bet that the Democrats are going to use their control in the Senate to be obstructionists. They're going to make sure that Donald Trump oh, made the doesn't get any more legislation. Uh, yeah, right. In in the House, uh, they're going to make sure that basically none of the bills being passed through the House will ever make it to the Senate. And the issue here also is that Republicans don't really have many moral uh, legs to stand on, because they did the same thing to Barack Obama. So when the when the rhetoric gets heated and they start saying, you know, this is ridiculous. Look how look how unethical they're being. Look how they're obstructing all of these all of these initiatives. Right. You guys did the same thing. So it's 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 going to be an interesting time for sure. But we saw in the Obama era that uh, mm. because it was split for, for most of his uh, presidency, the, the House and the Senate, that uh, they always had to uh, get to, to some agreement, uh, Democrats and uh, Republicans. And we've seen under Trump's uh, presidency, even with the Republicans controlling the House and the Senate, mm. they're, they're, there's always been, because it's just they've needed only the Republicans, then right. uh, every uh, a single Republican has, has been able to uh, decide, well, uh, I don't like this particular part of Trump's agenda. I'm going to side with the Democrats and potentially uh, put, it, put it all uh, at risk. I mean, that's why we didn't see Obamacare uh, become repealed, because there was always enough GOP senators to try and uh, kill it. Right. I mean, yeah, you still had some Republicans that were kind of in the center and didn't want to didn't want to upset uh, constituencies that were purple. But overall, Donald Trump has been really successful legislatively because a lot of his uh, a lot of his senators were voting exactly among party lines. Uh, what's going to happen now is that I mean, the the type of legislation that we're going to see actually be voted on in the Senate. I feel is going to be legislation of little practical significance because the parties are so split right now and so many of the Democrats' uh, constituents are demanding that they obstruct Donald Trump and anyone who dares work with Donald Trump or his administration or the Republicans would be committing political suicide. That what's probably going to happen is that as opposed to just seeing, uh, you know, legislation get a little bit more moderate, closer to the center to see uh, deals being made. Well, Nancy Pelosi has said that uh, the, the politics of division is is now over and that we can come together. Should we take her at a word? <laughs> I mean, bullshit. That's what they said. Bernie Sanders said that he would that he would support uh, Donald Trump uh, if he liked legislation. And I mean, no. It, that's not true. And and in fact, I would actually say that the, the rhetoric is going to get far more heated very, very soon. Here's my here's my prediction. And, you know, we can check in in a couple of months and see how true this is. Immediately, we're going to see the House move to subpoena Trump's uh, financials, so his uh, tax returns. We're going to see investigations uh, hardened against Russia. We're going to see investigations about his ties with Saudi Arabia. We're going to see the special favors that supposedly he did for some governor somewhere so that Ivanka and her, uh, I don't know if it was uh, Don Jr. or whatever, if they were, uh, if, if they were uh, kind of not prosecuted for a, a very shady business deal uh, just because Trump gave a, a large sum of money to, uh, to a congressperson. They're just a million things that I think are going to start to become investigated right now. Uh, not to mention that I think that, that Democrats are also going to start to launch uh, several new investigations, probes, things like this, into any new initiative and the connections between the people leading those initiatives and other parties, just to make sure that there is a burden there stifling the Republicans. And so what's going to happen there, just because the, the, the Democrats are using whatever power they have to stand in the way of Donald Trump doing anything, is that the Republicans are going to take on their typical culture warrior uh, stance, and, and they're going to start fighting back. And then the Democrats are going to start fighting back. And so what we're going to see now is, is, is just uh, both sides getting more and more heated, less and less is going to get done, and both sides are going to become more unsavory to each other meaning that there can be far less uh, bipartisan support. So what I think what we're going to see is far more interesting rhetoric and far less progress being made. 
Now, there's always focus on some of the individual races and and winners, and and of course, mm. always the 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 winner in these elections is identity politics. A record <laughs> number of women elected to Congress. Uh, two uh, Native Americans uh, mm. elected, which means that Elizabeth Warren does not count as the first Native <laughs> American uh, <laughs> senator, and uh, also the the first uh, gay uh, governor uh, of mm. a state in in Colorado. Was there any other noteworthy uh, races that's worth commenting on? Well, there were there were a few that were pretty noteworthy. But I mean, before we move on to that, what you were saying about uh, the media and the the Democrats kind of fawning over this, you know, new diversity found in the House and the Senate and all and the gubernatorial races. What does it matter? I mean, they don't even know what their they don't even know what their own arguments are. So first yeah. of all, we're living in a post-racial society where race doesn't matter and no one should pay attention to it. Also, it is the most significant and important and relevant thing that's ever happened that a person with a certain, you know, color skin uh, has reached a position of power. Who cares? I mean, honestly, I, I don't want to say that, 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 you know, that it's not, you know, it's not good that, that everyone can participate, but since when, since when has anyone thought that a person having a certain amount of, uh, of you know darkness or tanness on their skin or liking to have sex with certain genders as opposed to others uh is suddenly a better or worse legislator so i just want to touch on that really, really quickly because it's kind of counteracts yeah own van narrative. jones called it a rainbow wave oh god and not even a wave it was four people it's like it's not even representative and you know they're they're minorities within the u.s and they're not even representative so it's not really a wave and also, no one really cares. I mean, I think, and I think that's a good thing. I think they, they don't, don't really understand on the left that we're supposed to not care. We're supposed to say, I'm going to vote for whoever is doing the best job, whoever will represent my ideas more, whoever I think is going to do the best for the country. And then they're turning around and saying, so both, it has to be a meritocracy in which we allow everyone to come forward uh, or, to, or to, to improve, to, to, to get ahead is the word I was looking for. But at the same time, let's make sure that the immutable characteristics are front and center. Well, uh, you know, that, that's, that's kind of a, a knocking of heads, I think. But uh, relevant to what you were saying before, if there were some, some significant races, uh, I was definitely very happy to see Beto O'Rourke uh, defeated by Ted Cruz. Now, Ted Cruz has never been uh, my favorite. And I know that a lot of people in The Unshackled, probably a lot of people, uh, in our audience really like Ted Cruz. Um, I hear he's kind of a hothead, not my favorite. And you had a lot of Republicans uh, saying terrible things about him. My favorite being that one guy said, I like Ted Cruz more than most Republicans and I hate Ted Cruz. So uh, it was uh, it was still good that he beat Beto O'Rourke who is you know an Irish guy pretending to be uh, a Mexican or something. Uh, of course we saw Alexandria, uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez win again she won against a very educated and intelligent economist uh but you know of course they weren't um they, they were just looking to to vote in the uh mexican bartender again who uh, you know can't tell monetary policy from a hole in the ground but well you know yeah and doesn't like debates uh because uh that's catcalling oh, yeah yeah because it's akin to 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 telling a woman that you want to sleep with her uh you know do you want to come discuss monetary policy with me uh you pervert. Uh, yeah, no, ridiculous. And this woman, I have to say, uh, I, I think that a lot of people get called stupid unnecessarily on, on the Democrats' end. I, I do understand that we don't agree with them, and sometimes they, they bluster just to, to pose, but I don't think a lot of them are stupid people. I don't think Nancy Pelosi is stupid, for example. I don't. Uh, think I do. I, I, I think you, she's you think stupid. she's. I don't think she's stupid. I think I think she says stupid things, and I think she's a bad uh, politician. I think that her her policy prescriptions are bad. I don't think she's dumb. I don't think she's a dumb person. I'm sure she's well educated. I'm sure she's well at putting two and two together. She has good reasoning, but she's just bad. Ocasio Cortez, on the other hand, and we can disagree on Nancy Pelosi. That's fine. Um, let's say uh, well, Laya Watha. Uh, she she messed up pretty badly, so uh, or <laughs> Pocahontas, I should say. She messed up, so she might be stupid. But no, Ocasio Cortez really is an extremely stupid person. She is supremely supremely stupid. She has an IQ of maybe she she's on the higher end of the IQ if it's a hamster. 
I think that she would be a, an intelligent hamster, it, it, kind of intelligent, but not for a human being. But this woman, you know, she, she, she can't respond to any of the questions that she's asked. She wants to push forward a livable minimum wage that includes uh, a salary for food, a salary for, uh, well, uh, money put aside for food, money put aside for savings, also money just for you to live your life, plus affordable housing and completely socialized health care. And everyone says, well, you know, that's, that's going to triple uh, the, the, the budget of the U.S. How are you going to pay for that? And she's like, no, it's going to save money. And we're like, no, 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 it's not. Like, you know, the, the, the economists have come out with it. It's going to cost triple. How are you going to pay for it? We're like, oh, we're just going to pay for it because it's going to save us money. So no, she, she's a severely flawed human being, but um, she's back in the Senate. And uh, finally, the, the woman who, who just lost absolutely miserably is Heidi Heitkamp, who decided to do something really, really egregious uh, in a last second ploy to try to use uh, the Me Too movement to push herself ahead and took a name, it took a bunch of names from a bunch of rape uh, victim survivors, uh, rape victims rather, or sexual assault survivors and published them uh, in, in her campaign ad. And it turns out that she didn't get permission from these women to actually publish that. So they were understandably upset, not to mention that about 10 or 12 of those women came out and said they weren't even the victims of sexual assault. Needless to say, she has been uh, she has been defeated also. But uh, it's a it, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag of uh, of wins and loses uh, today. Just because it's um, there's so many races happening. I believe it was around 400 races uh, that went on today. So it's kind of hard to get an exact uh, an exact measure. And of course, there's uh, gubernatorial uh, races at the state level for for, for mm -hmm. governor. The uh, Democrats uh, made some gains there as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Democrats. Democrats. I think are if if you want to if you want to say who won the day, it was Democrats. Some people are saying Donald Trump is the first president in 160 years to gain seats in the Senate uh, in his first midterm election. Sure, but I mean, this isn't a win. This isn't a win for for Republicans. They're entering a a field of extreme division and they just lost the lower house of Congress. Essentially, we can expect now for all of this fast moving policy to slow down severely. So yes, Democrats made wins in the, in, in the lower house and they also won the races with the governors. And yeah, I mean, you, you have to call an, an ace and ace. They, they won today, they won the, the, the race. And now that Democrats uh, have won the, the House, they think they're on the path to uh, beating Trump in, in 2020 now. Uh, mm. Republicans and conservatives have been saying that the way that uh, the left and Antifa have been carrying on, oh, that's just going to cement uh, Trump's uh, uh, re-elections. But, uh, but yeah, mm. th this is still a setback for, for Trump. He's lost one House of of Congress, and uh, you you would be a fool to to not think that uh, 2020 presidential race is is in play. And of course, attention now is going to turn to the, the Democrat uh, primaries. Uh, I think the, mm -hmm. the Democrats should go for someone uh, younger, uh, next next generation. Sure, their ideas will be bad, but at least they won't be like old, <laughs> like Hillary and right. and and Joe Biden. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. obviously how well, the next Congress unfolds that's going to play into how the twenty twenty race is going to shape up. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably uh, because I mean it, it's going to it's going to shape uh, the achievements uh, of of Donald Trump going forward, which were kind of his uh, his primary uh, slogan going into twenty twenty. It was his primary achievements. It's uh, it's what he could sell to get more votes. Uh, yeah. But when it comes to it, oh, sorry, were you, were you going to say something? Yeah, the economy, uh, he said he's going to start building right. the, the border wall, uh, obviously mm. um, bringing jobs uh, back to America, um, restoring mm. a sense of national pride. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, restoring a sense of national pride, that that's the type of thing that I don't like uh, presidents going on about because it's, uh, I mean, that's uh, that's not really the job of the president. The president can can go uh, some ways in in helping that happen, but that's that's not something that you can legislate. So, I I understand the economy is doing very well. He has reduced a lot of um, 
a lot of regulations. So Trump does have certain things going into the election. But I think that another thing into the 2020 election, but I think one thing to remember is that people's memories are pretty small. They're pretty short. Uh, Barack Obama, I think a lot of people forget, was actually pretty unpopular uh, at first. And then he became like this uh, meme, this wonderful messiah to the, to the large swath of the left. So I do think that it's going to have uh, an impact, but the, the real impact is going to be on his ability to get anything done. Uh, and also, you already have two Democrats who are polling higher than he is. Uh, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden are both, if the election they're was all today, old. they're both outside the margin of error. This is true. I mean, it's a shame, but, uh, you know, I guess I guess the, <laughs> they're just going to keep getting older and older. I mean, what, what can we do? As long as it's not the Kennedy, this redhead Kennedy, I forget his name. He's insufferable. They're trying to push him as um as a contender and he, he's really just a nasty piece of work uh well it's certainly going to be an interesting ride the the next two years we'll be covering it closely here at the the unshackled and even though american politics has been insane the past three to four years uh <laughs> oh it'll probably get uh even more insane even crazier, yes, and we'll, we'll look forward to president pelosi uh and, uh, and reporting on her <laughs> Oh, and uh, a note to your uh, a note to your viewers before before I uh, I go. Front and center is coming back. I promise. I know. I you know we've had a lot of projects and we've had to push it back further and further, but it's absolutely coming back. And uh, and I'm sorry that it's taken so long, but we're we're working on it. Yeah, it better come back. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Emilio. Oh, thank you, Tim. And now on to Facebook bands with uh, Dusty Bogan, Ben Shand. Ben, welcome back to the show. How you going, mate? Yeah, I'm going great, thanks. But uh, more the question, how have things been for you? Because, or oh, how are you coping without Facebook? Because it's such a big part of all our lives these days. It's where our friends and family connections are. So, so what's it been like? Uh, it's probably been a good thing, hey. <laughs> Not to be on Facebook as much. <laughs> The first day when I got the ban, um, like I woke up, I thought, oh, what the hell? Facebook's not working. And then one of the boys sent uh, sent me an article saying we've all been taken off, all the crowd boys. So, and then it, it was a bit of a scream for, uh, I think I was already on we, uh, MeWe. So luckily enough, bam, there was, by the time I logged on there, there was already like a crowd boys chapter going and, it all it went pretty quick, you know what I mean? It all come together pretty quick for us. Yeah. Oh, well, you and me, we've been reduced to chatting on, on Instagram. That's how we've been uh, communicating. But yeah, the the reaction from the, the Proud Boys has been to, to move to, as you mentioned, MeWe. There's also uh, Minds.com uh, and also uh, Discord. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump on all of them, I reckon, and... I'll have a go. Uh, uh, do you think, uh, because as I mentioned, we, we are also dependent on Facebook. Everyone's talked about because there's a lot of people who have copped 30 day bans from Facebook for, for saying things that they didn't think were, were controversial. And we all say, oh yeah, we should move to mines or, or whatever. And like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a great idea, but we never do until or well, something on this scale happens where the, the Proud Boys were completely uh, deleted from Facebook and all the admins and elders uh, were all uh, deleted as well. Yeah, it just happened so quickly. Like, um, you just kind of don't know. I guess you don't know how. I'm on Messenger all the time just chatting to mates. I reckon that's the biggest loss out of losing facebook really you know it's all the group chats where it's just all your mates you know what i mean yeah so, and and for the dusty bogan you know man i was uh ticked up a lot of views there so all that's gone dusty bogan's dead nah not really you can't kill a bogan <laughs> <laughs> no you haven't been turned to to dust internet dust yeah, not yet. I grew a mustache. This is my um, 
undercover, mate. Oh, was that, yeah, Movember? Yeah, Movember. I thought I'd give it a crack. First moustache ever. Oh, Facebook's blocking fundraising for men's health. That's right. I'll have to, um... I spoke to Malcolm Roberts yesterday from One Nation about it, you know, and they they all jaw-dropped. They're like, what the hell? Uh, It was real interesting. If they do it to us, they can do it to anyone, you know? Yeah, oh, well, they did it to, to Alex Jones uh, uh, a month ago, and uh, as we've just mentioned, your Facebook page now, you didn't actually have a proper Facebook page until quite recently, you'd just been posting on, on your personal profile, I think I was one of the people that said you should get a, a proper Facebook page, which <laughs> now obviously it uh, hasn't uh, lasted long, but uh, not only was that deleted, you tried to create an alt account and so did many of the other uh proud boys but your your alt was uh deleted as well yeah i got they shut me down pretty quick the second time round it's real funny is i was kind of sitting there and i tried with a different email and then i'm like i'm in <laughs> laughing and um i couldn't help myself but I like uploaded a video straight away and then oh, started, that, yeah that would have posting in groups and then I think in like it must have been like you know a few minutes there and I just accepted like 30 friend requests I got accepted to a few secret groups and then I'm like shared it shared a video bam 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 and then next minute it's saying verify your um uh, they were saying like, yeah, we need to verify your account. Te- uh, what's your mobile number so we can text through some code? And um, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> and you were quite active in promoting your work on, on Facebook. I used to get uh, 10, 12 notifications saying Ben Shan shared this to, to, to that group. So you put a lot of effort into that. Yeah, I'd have a good crack, you know what I mean? I wonder if I annoyed the shit out of people. Just, I I said to a mate, I said, you must get all these notifications when I share. But, you know, you do what you got to do, eh? Uh, uh, I'm guilty of doing it as well. I I don't have to do it as much as I used to at the the, the beginning. But, yeah, it's it's the main way to get your your work out. Now, of course, the the rationale for you and the other Proud Boys being uh, deleted is that because is you're a, a violent uh, hate group. Now, this all uh, turbocharged after the events in, in New York when uh, Proud Boys uh, defended themselves from some Antifa uh, attackers. And, of course, there was a politically motivated in- investigation instigated by uh, local New York Democrats. And, of course, it's spread to Australia now with a petition by this uh, Sudanese lawyer, uh, Nadol Nuon, uh, to have uh, Gavin banned from touring Australia in uh, December. Now that's got over uh, 51,000 signatures. Now you're one of the most uh, relaxed and laid back people I've, I've met. Uh, uh, do you feel that you're in a, a violent hate group and that where Gavin comes here, you're just going to want to go out and smash people, smash immigrants nah no no it's funny um do you remember when stefan mullen you come came to brisbane right you can watch the video and us boys were walking in we're having a few beers and then we're like oh anti bars here we're kind of like a bit excited you know and we're like oh this is going to be awesome fun and I'm walking, and I'm like, hey, he's going, everyone. <laughs> and just saying g'day, and they're, like, screaming at me. We're just smiling at them, and, like, and I'm sticking my mic in their face, like, g'day, mate, you know, how are ya? Um, so I think, like, you know what, if someone punches me or punches one of my mates, like, that's a different story. But we definitely, we're going to rallies, we're going to shows just to buddy have fun. You know what I mean? We love going and having beers with the boys and uh, rock up to a show, mate. That's what it's all about. 
Uh, probably uh, one of the, the biggest attackers in the Australian media of the, the Proud Boys has been a News Corp reporter, uh, Rick uh, Morton. Uh, he uh, said that uh, you and the other Brisbane Proud Boys attended a, a neo-Nazi rally. What was the story there? All oh, right, up there. The, um, that was the anti-safe school rally. So... I think I read, uh, I probably only read a paragraph of that article, you know, and I try not to read any negative crap. I just sort of, ah, if you want to be like that, I'm not going to waste my time, you know what I mean? But all in all, I kind of think that's a real dodgy low blow. There's a whole lot of people there who are just genuine concerned Christians and conservatives and libertarians, people who... Um, they're just concerned about the safe school. They don't want that kids taught their 60 genders, you know, and that's what it was all about. Uh, true, true blue crew put on the, um, the rally. So, you know what, they were nice as, they were, and they're like families. The funny thing is, is like men, women, children, there was people there, uh, some like multi-ethnic groups of people, like everyone was welcome. And uh, there was people from multiple parties there. Um, some liberal national guy, uh, Malcolm Roberts. So there's like uh, Fraser Anning. There's heaps of different politicians and people. It was like full diverse. Um, I read that article. I thought, well, oh, man, this is that's some radical shit that guy's come out with, you know. So now that you're completely banned from Facebook, you're in the same league as uh, Blair Cottrell, uh, formerly of the United uh, Patriots Front. Uh, now, you interviewed him at uh, Liberty Fest and uploaded it to uh, Facebook. Uh, now, uh, do you get the feeling that uh, you putting that on Facebook, it sort of m made you a marked man? I mean, this uh, he's been banned again from... Uh, completely from from Facebook, and uh, you're the you're the next uh, scalp. Oh man, I like dead set. So on that day, we went the day of the rally. It's a bit of a story. We went to the pub across the road from the pub. There's a Vietnamese rally going on against communism. So we're over there. We're talking to them. Then we go to the safe school rally. Um, interview some awesome stuff there it's all on the dusty bogan on youtube check it out it's like a good laugh and then we came, came to liberty fest we didn't even buy a ticket we just rocked up and we just sort of stuck around and had a chat and got some rad interviews right so you know i had the opportunity to speak to blair and yourself and uh warren mundane and it, like it was awesome and i knew i knew when i posted um i thought you know blair he's got a target on his head um, and when I, I posted that um, particular uh, interview, I posted it to Blair and Warren Mundine, all in one post. So clearly it's like I went to Liberty Fest, here's Warren Mundine, here's Blair, and um, I posted it, and I think I don't really engage in the comments section, you know what I mean? I just I don't have time, you know what I mean? And uh, I think it was in the afternoon I looked at my phone, and I usually... I noticed there might be a bit of a debate or some bloody abuse going. And I read through it and I thought, holy crap, this is getting a bit out of control. And then I realised on post block as well. So Facebook buddy post blocked me straight away. And it, it was at that um, Liberty Fest, you you said, mate, you should start your own page. And I did. And I got heaps of uh, views and people liking it straight away. But I had that page uh, three days and they post blocked me. And it was pretty much from posting that Blair uh, interview. So definitely, it definitely got me a bit of uh, attention, you know. And it took out uh, Warren uh, as well, because uh, you posted them together. His interview went yeah. as well. Yeah, so that article that guy wrote up, he said something about Warren Mundine, right? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's crazy. And, like, if... Uh, I mean, I probably uh, the Warren Mundine interviews on YouTube. So, you know, we just having a bit of banter and a bit of a laugh, and we had a few drinks, and it, it was all good. You know, same with Blair. Like, 
he seems like a nice enough guy. Like, I noticed I that's know, missing it's... from YouTube, that interview. Mm. I kind of thought, you know, as soon as I posted it, I got post blocked, and I'm like, what the heck's going on? Kind of uh, thought, man, I might just pull it down. And uh, I, had, I had my own Dusty Bogan page up for a month. It was, I think it was three days off a month. And um, in that time, half of it I was post blocked. So as soon as I made that page, Facebook was just coming down hard. I think I had uh, something like 35,000 views uh, and 80,000 people like visit the page. So, I mean, maybe they were afraid. And I didn't even, because I got post blocked, I could post on the page, but I couldn't share it. So um, I posted the Vietnamese. Um, interviews and the Vietnamese people loved it and they were just sharing the hell out of it, eh? Uh, getting thousands of views on them uh, interviews with the, at the Vietnamese rally. Uh, it's pretty pretty rad, you know? Yeah, and you're still on uh, YouTube. You've still got that uh, presence there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably... Uh, I only really use uh, YouTube as just uh, save for saving my videos, so... Um, I guess now probably focus a bit more on YouTube and the other social media out there, you know? Uh, so uh, Dusty Bogan is still going to uh, carry on. I mean, obviously Facebook, uh, that's, it seems to be the, the end unless you want to get a, a VPN or try some high-tech way to try and get back onto Facebook. But probably if you, if you show your face there, you'll probably get uh, shut down uh, pretty quickly. We mentioned Proud Boys are on Minds and, and MeWe. Uh, so Proud Boys have, have re regrouped as well. Yeah, we man, we regrouped like surprisingly quick. Um, I think it was like I'm at work, realized this has happened. Someone sent me a buddy article, and I'm like, holy crap! Luckily enough, already had a WeMe account set up, and then, bam, it was like someone sent me a friend request saying, "Hey, bro, I've already made you admin on the Proud Boys page." And I think there might have been five people on it, and then by the end of the day, there's like. 40 you know and all the admin of everyone who got booted from facebook's already on we man it was pretty cool we're already we're like all right boys we'll go for beers on the weekend so it's like you know I haven't lost the step there so uh i guess the challenge will be uh recruiting for proud boys now so facebook definitely made it easy you know people could just voluntarily uh come to the betting page and they knew who we were, so now we might have to get a bit, you know. Well, we'll definitely, um, we're going to keep going hard and we're going to work this out, you know. Well, Proud Book, the, the, the Proud Boys' own social media website, that got uh, deplatformed, the hosting got revoked, uh, similar thing, uh, what happened to, to Gab.ai uh, just last week. <laughs> yeah. And it was a pretty, it was all over um, Infowars. So I've got like, I've got my Christian TV satellite hooked up, right? And Infowars is a channel on it. So it's 24 seven. And the other, while this is all happening, I'm watching buddy Infowars and they're talking about it all happening to Gab. And, you know, he had an ad on there every hour. There was the Gab ad running on Infowars. Wow. Like, on you what the hell's going on so i'm just thinking like far out man we're we're right at the coal face of like what's happening in culture hey eh? you know i you'll have to give me the the name of that satellite uh, provider i wouldn't mind getting there the info was channel uh on my uh tv it, it, it yeah. sounds like uh well they're not gonna shoot down the satellite <laughs> yeah i it was um install life so it's just some Christian um, TV provider, and I think you pay something like four hundred and fifty bucks for the satellite, and then that's it. You own it for life. And there's two hundred channels, so a lot of them are crap, to be honest. But <laughs> you know, whatever. Infowars is on there, so I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds awesome. Yeah. 
Well, it's been good to catch up with you again, Ben, the, the Facebook uh, outlaw. Uh, uh, so in, 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 enjoy this uh, new underground status that you have. And yeah, let's hope we continue to see the, the Dusty Bogan out and about in Brisbane. Yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully I can lead the way. And uh, when, when you all get kicked off, Facebook, just... Uh, Give me a yell and I'll show you what to do, mate, because I would have worked it out by then. Yeah, well, we'll know who the go-to person is. Yeah. Right. Well, well, check me out on um, YouTube then, eh? The Dusty Bogan and come on uh, MeWe and find the uh, Proud Boys Australian betting page if you're keen for beers. Now, of course, what could get you banned from Facebook is uh, racial stereotyping, and now that's what we're going to turn to by catching up with Unshackled contributor Libby Down Under. Libby, welcome back to the show. Glad to be back. Now, the reason I've got you on today is because everyone was saying how horribly racist uh, Ross Cameron was for describing Chinese people as black-haired, slanty-eyed, uh, yellow-skinned uh, people and that he deserved to, to lose his job over it. Uh, as an Asian woman, were you offended? Not at all. I mean, back to the matter is, I'm stereotyping here, stereotyping here but uh, there's a reason why we have stereotypes because most Asians have black hair. Uh, not all Asians have slanty eyes, but many do. Um, and there was one other, one other characteristic he described. Um, in any case, um, they're all um, stereotypical features of um, an Asian person. And well, that's just that. It's, I mean, I don't, um, myself, I don't have particularly slanty eyes, but a lot do. and. You know, did having you know having to add in black hair and slanty eyes and all that, did that necessarily add value to the conversation they were having on the show? Not necessarily, but it wasn't like a benefit or a detriment. Um, it was just extra descriptive words. That's all that was. Now, uh, if you listen to what Ross Cameron was saying in full, he was actually making a pro-Chinese statement because he was talking about their embrace of, of Western culture and how that is a, is a good thing for their, their civilizational uh, development. But yeah, because he used this, uh, this stereotype language, that took away from from what he was saying and Ross Cameron did concede that he was clumsy and he often has this habit of you know he's trying to be extra articulate and it just didn't didn't work that time well it does go to show I mean him he, basically he was making a point about Chinese folks you know they see aspects of Western culture and you know there are things about Western culture they love to embrace and this isn't just in China, this is also in other countries. They see parts of Western culture that they want to have as part of their culture and they're embracing it. Um, it that kind of narrative isn't particularly popular in mainstream media in the Western world. You don't see that um, discourse being touched on a lot. And so as soon as he mentions something that was completely irrelevant, um, neither here or there, as I said, there wasn't necessarily a benefit or a detriment to him throwing in slanty eyes, black hair and all of that. But, you know, um, uh, creating victims, so in this case, creating victimhood out of Asian folks, um, mainstream media saw that, capitalised it, and unfortunately Sky Channel buckled, and I don't believe they should have buckled. I don't think, you know, there would have been any huge financial loss to them if they didn't buckle, I don't think they should have buckled. Now, often, even though you weren't offended, uh, it's often the case with these outrages. If one person takes offence, then it's one person uh, too many. And uh, Tim Supomasani, who's the former race discrimination commissioner, he was offended by this racism, and so was uh, Benjamin Law, who's uh, another uh, Asian uh, media personality uh, they called it a, another sign of the the normalization of uh, racism in australia uh, do you believe this to be true i don't believe so um you look at um again stereotyping here 
you look at how well Asian Australians tend to do, let's say, in employment, in education. We know all those stereotypes. Um, Asian, uh, Asian Australians aren't doing too badly. In fact, a lot of them are doing pretty well um, compared to the rest of the population. So to then package um, this incident into this, oh, you know, there's some sort of uh, um, institutionalised pervasive racism that uh, Ross Cameron's uh, comments is just the latest addition to that. That's, no, that's, um, they, these folks who've spoken out against um, Ross's comments, um, they're not necessarily representative of um, Asian Australians. Um, you know, they don't represent myself. Um, I, I've spoken to a few, um, you know, quote unquote, Asian folks on social media about the incident. They weren't particularly offended themselves. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, straight up racism, definitely not. Um, poorly worded, maybe, but again, neither here or there. Now, racial stereotyping has been in the news uh, quite a bit, not just in Australia, and there's these been this big uh, drama about uh, Apu Anasapima Pentalon on the on the Simpsons uh, because uh, there was a documentary released by an Indian American comedian, actual uh, Indian from India, uh, Harry uh, Konda Blue, uh, uh, called uh, the problem with Apu, and he says that Apu is a negative uh, caricature of uh, South. Asian people and uh, uh, causes a lot of angst among uh, Indian uh, Americans. Now, uh, apparently the, the Simpsons have decided to, to write a uh, poo out just to avoid uh, this outrage, but everyone forgets that The Simpsons has been on for nearly 30 years and it's only in 2018 that it's decided that a poo is offensive. Which is interesting because The Simpsons, like many many cartoons, many games, etc., out there in pop culture, you see caricatures in all those shows and all those games that make fun of everyone, of every every stereotype out there. Um, Simpsons, no different. Um, whether you know they're making fun of. Um, uh, the politicians in the show, so I think it, the mayor of Springfield uh, is the prominent example. Um, whether it's the um, the kid in high school that you like to pick on, so I think his name is Nelson or something rather. Anyway, you know, I grew up on The Simpsons. I saw all those caricatures of nearly every single char every single stereotype that you can think of in our society. But the character of a poo. He was much. He was portrayed much better, in my view, than all the other characters. He was portrayed as the hardworking immigrant, came over to America, wanted to do something for himself, and um, eventually we see him portrayed in The Simpsons as running a um, convenience store. And oh, but that's you know, a come, stereotype too. There's nothing wrong with a law-abiding. You know, you want to run your own small business, you want to be entrepreneurial because that's the great American dream. And by extension, it's the great Australian dream, you know. That, that was my parents' dream. They didn't want to come over to Australia and, you know, sit on their butts and uh, expect a welfare check to come their way. They wanted to work hard. They wanted to be entrepreneurial, which I did. And in some ways, a poo reminds me of my parents. And why shouldn't? Um, that'd be a good thing. That, that's a very good thing. Uh, probably what made uh, the Apu uh, drama even worse is because it was voiced by a, a white actor, Hank Azaria, and of course there's the the, the, the term we're all too familiar with, cultural uh, appropriation, uh, doing uh, yellow face. And, but there's also Asian Simpsons characters. Uh, Akira, the, the Japanese guy who runs the, the Japanese restaurant, speaks in a stereotypical Asian accent. And there's also uh, Cookie Kwan, who's uh, one of the, the business uh, women around uh, Springfield. Uh, uh, she's voiced by a female white actress. So... Uh, this has occurred 
uh, throughout the the history of voice acting that uh, well, white voice actors have voiced uh, char uh, characters of different races because you know you don't they don't dress up as those char uh, th those characters they're, they're all animated. Again, interesting point because you don't see anyone complaining about say gay actors who um, play in straight roles or straight actors playing in gay roles. Oh, they are now. Um, it's 2018. It's the current year. <laughs> but none of this used to be any issue. And it used to be about what we could see on screen, about the quality of the acting. It, you know, so it used to be about meritocracy. The, the, best, best, actor, the best actor, best actress playing the roles that would best portray their characters. Um, now, for me personally, uh, in, in others in the trans community will disagree with me, I don't necessarily have an issue with a cis actor playing a trans actor as long as, you know, they're the best for a role and they can best portray the lived experiences of trans folks. And, you know, we could go on about this until the cows come home, but it's not about, you know, um, the, you know, quote unquote lived experiences of the actors and actresses. It's about the portrayal of the lived experiences of the characters, if it is indeed meant to be based on real life experience. Now, we've just had uh, Halloween. Uh, it's even though it's mainly big in America, we've embraced it here. And we go through this every Halloween. There's always outrages over uh, culturally appropriated Halloween costumes, but there was quite a few incidents of uh, white people dressing up as uh, black uh, people in, in blackface, which, yes, it does have a negative uh, historical uh, connotation, but there are these days, if you're if you're dressing up as someone uh, black, you're doing it as a term of in of endearment. And there was a teacher who got into trouble here in Australia. There was actually a nurse in the United States who who lo uh, lost her job. Would you? Uh, what What's your opinion on uh, white people dressing up in, as it's called, yellow face and an Asian person? Um, I don't see an issue. I, again. An interesting point because when I put makeup on, I don't often wear makeup, but when I put makeup on and, you know, uh, people take photographs of me, it always turns out that because of the makeup I use, um, I come across um, in the photos as much whiter than I actually am. Yet I don't hear anyone complaining about me white facing white people because of makeup I use. Um, I mean, you you may have seen photos of me on Facebook with makeup on. I look much whiter than I currently am, than what I naturally how I naturally look. So then, am I white facing white people? I don't think so. No. And so the opposite can only be true. Um, if there are um, quote unquote white folks out there who want to, I don't know, look more um, Asian, so to speak. Well, um, perhaps. Um, they're as guilty as I am, I'm as guilty as they are, and therefore, why are we even talking about this? Much more, much more important issues out there, actually. <laughs> Now, it seems to have been established by the social justice warriors that dressing up as another uh, race or, or culture is is wrong. Uh, but there's there's been some activists on the right who've said, well, hang on, if that's wrong, then how come it's okay for a man to become a woman uh, or a woman to become a man and uh, appropriate the other uh, gender? Uh, Brendan O'Neill put out an article about this, pointing out the, the double standard. And there was there's also this campaign from uh, Kiralee Smith. Uh, uh, she's mainly known for her uh, halal activism, but she started another campaign, Stop Appropriating My uh, Gender uh, Against uh, Transgenderism. Now, as a, a trans woman, what do you think of this argument and this uh, so-called double standard? The first point I'd make is, if the argument was... Um, stop, you know, quote unquote, stop appropriating um, my biological sex. It, it is true, you know, taking hormones, having surgery, all of that, that is 
um, it is correct to say it's appropriation of uh, biological sex. If it's going to be about appropriation of gender, well, you know, women, including trans women, they all uh, appropriate each, each other's genders anyway, and the same can be said about men, including trans men. Um, so uh, it's, I'm not a great fan of that argument. What I will say, what I will point out, uh, another, it's another interesting point. Um, I used to cosplay a lot, so cosplaying characters from Japanese anime. And, you know, it, you look at um, the Japanese anime that's out there, they essentially, all the characters, a lot of them are meant to be Japanese characters, but they all look white. No one complains about them. And then here in the Western world, you go to anime conventions and what have you, um, everyone's cosplaying, you know, predominantly Japanese characters in these Japanese anime who look white anyway. So, but no one complains about that. No one brings that up as an issue. Um, so it's, we're kind of just going around um, into the rabbit hole, out of it and back into the rabbit hole. Um, you know, it, it's, appropriation isn't necessarily a bad thing. Appropriation in a lot of cases is just appreciation for other cultures. And isn't that what uh, multiculturalism originally about? Appreciation for other cultures that are integratable with ours. Well, Libby, it's been good to catch up and get uh, your perspective on it. I mm -hmm. might as well end uh, this uh, segment with a racial stereotype. Uh, keep up your hardworking uh, Asian ethic. <laughs> we'll definitely do. <laughs> Not a bad one. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Now, The Unshackled, we're taking out what I term uh, social media insurance. We are now on minds.com. You can check us out there by going to minds.com slash the underscore unshackled. And we're also on gab.ai, which is back online after it was uh, deplatformed by a whole host of big tech companies. And you can find us there at gab.ai slash the unshackled. So if you're on those platforms, uh, make Make sure you check us out or I would suggest opening up an account there. Please remember that the Gavin McGuinness Australian Tour is now being moved to December and now, now include anti-Islam activist and British values campaigner Toby Robinson. It is being billed as the Deplorables Tour. Tickets for Gavin's tour have been converted to Deplorables tickets, visiting the same cities. If you haven't got your tickets yet, you can go to the new tour website, which is thedeplorables.com.au. The Victorian state election is being held on Saturday the 24th of November, so join us for another election night live stream starting at 6pm Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time when the polls close. Join me on Facebook and YouTube live along with my panel which will be The Young Conservative, David Hiscock from XYZ and Mangus O'Mallon. It is shaping up to be a closely fought election with the campaign now in full swing, so the result will certainly be interesting to watch. If you want to take a stand against Antifa violence, there is another free speech rally happening in Melbourne, hosted by the Australian Freedom of Speech Movement, happening on Saturday the 1st of December at 12pm in the Melbourne CBD. Also remember, we can only do this with your support, and the best form of support is always becoming a patron at Patreon, which is patreon.com slash the unshackled. Or like many of you have been doing, sending us a direct contribution via our PayPal link, which is paypal.me slash the unshackled, which all goes a long way. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.